All right, it's time for the final level of hell before the boss, which I have reasonably well memorized because it is the most difficult to navigate. Also pretty short after you figure out how to get through it, so this shouldn't be so bad. Lots of platforms to jump on in the beginning, but I know exactly where to go. If, uh, if my skills and instincts don't fail me here, we shouldn't need to get hit at all during this opening section. And we should only have to worry about combat after we go down the gullet, so to speak. I hope you remember the switches were a thing, because if you didn't, then this level is going to confuse you a lot. We can avoid fighting almost all of the enemies in this opening segment, which is what I'm going to do. And if we do have to fight, then the Ring of Pain and, well, the Armageddon we have equipped right now should uh, do just fine. This moving platform, while it appears to move straight, does slightly jiggle left and right as it goes. Which is kind of mean, but it's very unlikely that that will trick you enough to cause you to fall down. Bunch of enemies on platforms in this section, but we can just jump right past them. We can of course jump past them on our way back too. The only one we really have to worry about is that zombie that spawns next to the trap. Because he is guarding a chest we want, but we can defeat him using our Ring of Pain fairly easy, I believe. And there's the hidden chest I was talking about, and inside it, something a little unexpected. The Shield of Midas power-up. Now, uh, this may seem like a terrible idea, considering the Lightning Shield is so much superior. But we're gonna want the Shield of Midas for what I have planned in the final world. Of course, I have to make it to the final world with the Shield of Midas power-up for it to do anything. But I'm fairly confident in my ability to get through this stage, and the boss of hell is easy. He's just a real pushover. We're not gonna have Armageddon too much longer, but we've had it for a while longer than most of our sword power-ups, all things considered. So this wasn't a bad run. And we still have the Ring of Pain around to protect us, so... In this cavern, there are mouths on the walls that shoot fire just like those dragons in the previous levels. The only ones that are actually difficult to deal with are these two right here because they're so close together. And I almost always get hit by them, but the other ones... Very easy to walk through. They give you plenty of time. I like this big open area right here visually. It just looks really cool. And there's lots of pits of, uh, pits of lava for us to jump on. Which is incredibly dangerous because lava is an instant kill. So let's not step in it. Over there to our right is a set of armor we will actually be ignoring because it's part of one of the most difficult jumps in the game and it's not worth the risk. Oh hey, uh, just when I was worried we were going to run out. And of course there's another corridor up here. The enemies are nothing because we have the Armageddon again, or rather we refilled our Armageddon. And the fire breathing mouths are nothing either because they're far enough apart that we don't have to worry about them. In this section up here, there are some enemies on relatively small platforms, but with the Ring of Pain, we shouldn't really have to worry about that, because we can easily push them off or just kill them entirely, without having to get anywhere near them. And if we did have to get near them, we still have Armageddon, you know? Just a simple square press to kill them. That was nice. There's another Armageddon refill over a bit to our right that I'm sure you can see from here. But there are two pig demons that spawn on the platform next to it, and it's very easy to get knocked off, so we're not going to go for it. And this is the last corridor section before we reach the final stretch of the level. While this is a crowded area and it would be difficult to fight these guys if we didn't have Armageddon handy, we do, so we can clear out the entire hallway no problem. There's a sneaky bomb-throwing enemy up here, but we can just jump right past him, thankfully. And up here on top of this, uh, what, what would you call this structure? Either way, up here is the final stretch of the level. There are a few more enemies before a bunch of platforms. And the bunch of platforms is the final challenge of the level. There is no big onslaught of enemies, unlike uh, almost every other level besides this one. 
All we have to do is make it across these platforms without falling to our death. Which isn't that bad, the platforms aren't even that far apart. This axe enemy is a bit difficult to deal with, but we can just knock him over with our shield. And that buys us plenty of time to get over to this platform. Not a lot of room to fight this guy, but inside this chest is more than enough money to make up for most of the stuff we skipped in this level. It's a lot of cash, and an extra life. And to our right is the exit. Like I said, no big violent onslaught of enemies. 